So today I'm going to be doing an unboxing on all of these Motorola devices. Now, they're all budget entry level phones at various prices. They're all available from either Argos here in the UK or Amazon or eBay. So on the lead up to Christmas, if you're interested in a budget Motorola device, hopefully this video will give you a bit of an idea as to what's available. And I will be doing individual review videos and comparisons on all of these phones. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out when those videos go live. Let's get into it. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna start off with Motorola's entry-level phone, the E13. This is available from Argos, brand new, for about 80 quid. I was lucky enough to pick this up off eBay for about 55 quid in basically new condition with unused accessories. Box is open a little bit, but I'm just gonna go through the unboxing experience. So, Motorola E13 in creamy white. This has just two gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage, of course that is expandable. So let's just flip the box and on top you get the phone. There it is in creamy white, you just get a single 13 megapixel camera on the back and your LED flash. USB-C charging port, speaker grill and microphone on the bottom. And then 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. SIM tray on the left and then power button and volume rockers on the right. So there's no biometrics or anything on this phone. There's no fingerprint scanner. You just get the pin unlock or the face recognition. So just pop that aside for a minute and just see what else is in the box. Bit of paperwork and just your charging accessories. So there's no case in this phone. I have a feeling that this might be something that Motorola are gonna stop doing now to cut costs, etc. So we'll bung that aside for a minute. So this actually comes in this packet second hand. And there it is, Motorola G13. It's like a matte plastic finish on the back. Pretty lightweight. It's got a 6.5 inch 720p display on the front. Doesn't feel too bad to hold, to be fair. So let's just pop that one aside for a moment. And the next is the Motorola E22. The naming scheme is a little bit off with this, but it's about 90 quid brand new at the moment. I think it normally goes for about 80 quid, but I picked this up for 90. This is in fact brand new. Bear with. A few moments later. Oh. Sorry about that. It's a bit embarrassing when one comes unprepared with no knife. So, unboxing of the E22. I have seen the E13 before. I did open a box and just have a look at it. I've not seen the E22, so it'd be interesting to see what this one looks like. That's what it's like out of the box. So stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, which is a great thing to have at this price point. 6.5 inch, 90 Hertz display. Premium design. We'll see about that and I've got it in crystal blue. Four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. And then of course, can't get into the accessories typically. Paperwork and your charging bits as well. So just a bit of information on what's where on the phone. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can probably work that out anyway. Let's chuck that aside. So here is the E22 in crystal blue. Don't have to ruin that out a bit, which is great for when I sell it on afterwards. That looks quite nice, actually. It's a similar matte feel to the E13. Similar 6.5 inch display. It is still a 720p display again. And then on the bottom, it's the same again. USB-C charging port, speaker grill, microphone, on the left, SIM tray. On the top, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then on the right, you get your volume rockers and you get your power button, but this time you do get a fingerprint scanner with the E22, which is quite nice. The E22 does have a smaller battery than all of the other phones that I'm demonstrating for you today. It has a 4,020 milliamp hours, I believe, whereas obviously the E13 has a 5,000 milliamp hours. So you are gonna get slightly less battery life on the E22, but it'll still, I would imagine, get you through a day, but wait for the review and I'll let you know. So this is where now it goes off on a little bit of a tangent. I've got 
the Motorola G13 from, I think it's earlier on in this year, January, I think this one was released. Of course, they've since released the G14, but I thought I'd pick up a G13 as well. And this is gonna be an unwrapping as opposed to an unboxing. Let's get the old knife. Second hand, comes with a SIM tray, but no box or anything like that. That knife clearly didn't work very well. Oh, wrapped pretty well. Let's get rid of that. So as you can see, there's a bit of a trend going on with the design of these phones. They are all very, very similar and potentially could get a little bit confusing as to which is which just by their design. Now this one actually looks really nice. Couple of little marks on the back. I did buy it as a secondhand model and this cost me just 75 quid. So a pretty good price for this G13 and it's about a year-ish or just less than a year old, January I think it came out. So 50 megapixel primary camera and then you've got two other cameras there on the back. I will double check what they are. I can't remember, I do apologize. Bottom of the phone, another couple of little marks there. We do get again the same charging port, speaker grill, microphone. Top 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, stereo speakers again. SIM tray on the left, power button and volume rockers on the right. Of course that power button with the in-display fingerprint scanner. So in display, really. Capacitive button on the power. I've cocked that right up. Capacitive fingerprint scanner on the power button. Got there in the end. It's because it's like 7.30 in the morning and I'm recording this, so it's never gonna go well. So that's the G13. So, so far we've got the E13, E22 and G13. So that's one of the older models there. What have we got now? Let's do its successor, the G14, which has only just recently come out in the last month or two. Flip it onto the back. See richer details with full HD plus display. So they have actually increased the resolution on the G14 from a 720p display on the G13 to a 1080p display on the G14. One thing that I had noticed, which I think they have done and stripped back on is they've actually taken away the 90 hertz display on the G14 that they did have on the G13, potentially to cut costs, I guess. But now you've got a newer phone with a 60 hertz display, which is a bit of a bummer. Stereo sound, and then a 50 megapixel camera with night vision. And then I've got this phone in sky blue. Bit of a trend, I tend to always buy my phones in blue because it's like my favorite color, almost. So, G14. Basically the same as what's written on the box. And it's the same experience, SIM tool, charging brick, basic charging brick and USB-C charging cable. So let's just pop that on the top and chuck that over there. So Moto G14, of course, like I said, it's only just been released recently in sky blue. Can I slide this out without ruining? Yes. Quite a nice phone, actually, and it's gonna be a bit repetitive. Speaker grill on the bottom, USB-C charging port, microphone, SIM tray on the left, volume rockers, power button with integrated fingerprint scanner and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. And of course, 1080p, 60 Hertz, from what I can gather, display on the front and a hole punch design instead of the dew drop notch on the G13. But again, of course, Motorola are continuing that trend, that similar sort of square camera design. I actually really like it. And again, this is like a matte plastic finish on this phone and then this sky blue is really nice. One thing I don't like is when they put all this jargon at the bottom there. I know it's stuff that they've got to put on, but it doesn't look great. So yeah, G14. Now, G50 which again is one of their phones from either earlier this year or late last year. So I thought I'd pick this up as well. This one cost me, 
140 quid, I think, which is the same price as what I picked up the G14 for. Of course, this, even though this is older, this is gonna have some benefits over having this one instead of the G14. So, G53. Super fast 5G performance. So you get a Snapdragon 480 plus 5G, I believe, with the G53. And then this is a 120 hertz refresh rate display on this phone. Pop that aside. And this is where they started introducing the plastic free packaging, which is really great for the environment. So everything is recyclable. And then it's just the usual bits. I don't know if it's a special charger. No. Same as what's on the G14, paperwork in there, etc., and USB-C cable. Oh, I forgot the official name of the color, Arctic Silver for this one, and it's four gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage on this one. G14, what was that? Same, four gigs, 128 gigs of storage. Sorry, I'm not doing very well this morning. So, can I slide this out? Yeah, lovely. <clears throat> Don't mind that one, actually, Arctic Silver. But it's a basically identical design on the back to the G14. Slightly different flash module design, but you've got a quad camera, 50 megapixel setup on this G53. Buttons and ports are the same. Hole punch display as well. Like I say, 120 hertz display, which is a nice improvement, especially over that G14. And then lastly, officially lastly, the new G54, which has only just recently come out. I did pick this up for about 150 quid, which is a pretty good price. I've got this in midnight blue, and then they've upped the ante on this one with eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. So yeah, pretty good on this G54. 6.5 inch full HD display with Dolby Atmos again. So you're gonna get that nice stereo speaker sound with this one. 50 megapixel camera system with optical image stabilization and then super fast 5G performance. And this comes with a MediaTek Dimensity 7020, I wanna say and it's a six nanometer process. So you're gonna get nice improved performance and hopefully some good power efficiency from that chip. And again, in that plastic free packaging to help with the environment, which again, I think is really great. So Moto G54, enjoy every detail. Again, six and a half inch full HD display, same jargon on there. And then just because we've done it with everything else, same gubbins in the box. Oh, that charger looks different. So you get a 20 watt charger with the G54 for some improved charging speed, which is great. Motorola have never really been the best at providing great charging speeds on their phones. So that's something that's pretty good on this G54. What did I say it was? Midnight blue. So a nice dark blue. Now that is probably my favorite looking out of all of them. Really nice dark blue, almost black on the back there with a slightly lighter finish around the camera. And again, a matte finish on the back there, dual 50 megapixel camera, quad pixel because they're all pixel binning cameras aside from of course the E13 and the E22. So you should get some pretty decent results from these cameras, but of course I'll be checking that out in my full reviews. So the headphone jack is on the bottom of the G54 instead of at the top on the others. Microphone, USB-C charging port, speaker grill, volume rockers, fingerprint scanner, power button, yada, yada, yada. SIM tray on the left, and then at the top is just another microphone. So they moved it. Not sure why, but it's what they did. So that's all of the Motorola's. Can I move them in so you can see? So that's all the Motorola's that I'm unboxing today. But also what I do have, cocked up again, two secs. 
and that's the Motorola Edge 20 from a couple of years ago. Now, honestly, this phone has been a really pleasant experience to use. It's got a really nice, sleek design, very lightweight. I think it's only about 160 grams, 108 megapixel triple camera system with a usable ultra wide and 3X telephoto camera. Really slim design. Of course, it's been out for a couple of years, but I found the performance and everyday use on this phone to be absolutely great. Snapdragon 778 processor, 120, no, up to 144 hertz display. Really nice fluid display. Haven't got any complaints in terms of that. So I will be dropping an individual review on this phone as well, and maybe even comparing it to some of these Motorola's that I've got here in front of me. So I will be comparing all of these in various videos. So please be sure to check those videos out when they go live, subscribe so you don't miss out when they go live. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a subscribe to the channel. It does help out the channel long term. Thank you for watching this quick unboxing video and I'll see you in the next one.